Good morning and welcome to the course on uh, uh, in some of the books of the Bible. Let's uh, pray and we will get started. I'll just begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity, Lord, to uh, discuss your word and uh, know it in a deeper way. We pray that uh, you will breathe upon it. Father God, by your Holy Spirit, we pray, God, that we will receive the full power of, uh, Lord, your word and the work of the Spirit in our lives, oh God. Father, we speak blessings upon every single student, faculty, Lord, the college, and uh, Father, even our families right now, Father. We, we commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so let's come now to the end of uh, for Second Peter chapter 1. That's where we were. We saw how um, Peter encourages the believer to uh, grow in the Lord. He says that we can escape the corruption of the world. We can be partakers of the divine nature of God because God has given us what he what it takes to live a life of that kind. We saw how he shows us the path of fruitfulness and maturity. And he says that we need to add to our faith, uh, you know, many different, many different aspects that build our character. Then we went on to uh, the fact that Peter is saying he's reminding the believers. He leaves a reminder with the believers uh, because he also had an idea. God had already confirmed to him that very soon he will be uh, taken away. And uh, now moving forward, there is a, a, a section where he talks about, you know, how we must uh, follow God and uh, we we must also heed the prophetic word of god so from verse 16 he says don't follow cunning device fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty so what he and the other apostles have handed us handed to us they are by eyewitness peter was very much with jesus christ and they are not built up fables you know sometimes people trust and believe in uh, non-historical events and people but peter says what we handed over to you is not like that there is so much evidence we were eyewitnesses to the life of jesus christ and uh, you know the fact that jesus is the son of god and he talks about that incident right in the mount of transfiguration where they saw they saw uh, jesus being transformed and then you know uh, also he he states that one second let me just read out for he received from god the father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased so he has seen different things and he has also heard different things so he saw jesus being trans transfigured he saw a voice from heaven come right uh, you know at the time of his baptism uh, they must have seen they must have seen something unusual experienced something unusual so many different things have happened as they walked with the lord so he's just kind of summing up those experiences and he's saying you know uh, they even heard that voice uh, that that affirmed that Jesus is the son of God and verse 18 and we heard the voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain okay now moving on he says that we must we must um, believe in the word of prophecy so he says that the prophetic word you know that is like he gives this uh, uh, comparison like light that shines in a dark place so that is a characteristic of uh, the prophetic word because it brings hope right it brings hope and this word actually comes from god and he is also saying that you know why is he talking about all these things he's saying put your trust in jesus uh, as eyewitnesses, we have seen that he's the son of God. And then he says his word is sure. His word is valuable. And um, in fact, no scripture that we have is, you know, just by itself, but it is inspired by the spirit of God. It is actually prophetic. 
all of scripture is prophetic what is prof prophecy we said the mind of god being spoken isn't it the heart of god being communicated so all of scripture he says is prophecy okay it is not of any private interpretation and uh, we all know that prophecy does not come from man but it comes from god and uh, uh, you know even the people who wrote it down we might say that hey some some people wrote poetry some wrote prose uh, you know some wrote um, uh, uh, some other forms of uh, literary writing but it's not from their minds but they were inspired as they were moved by the holy spirit he says so all of scripture is god breathed and we can put our trust in the scriptures now let's continue we will move on i'm just going to keep moving on if you have questions please stop me and you can always ask me and now we'll go to chapter 2 and uh, chapter 3 we can kind of read it together because you know it has one theme running through it so we'll quickly read chapter 2 chapter 3 and then i'm going to share the meaning of both these chapters So, anyone, please feel free. I think I'll let one person read chapter two and one person read chapter three. Second Peter chapter two, destructive doctrines. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. and many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed by covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words for a long time their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber doom of false teachers for if god did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world but saved noah one of eight people a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of sodom and gomorrah into ashes condemned them to destruction making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly and delivered righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds then the lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment and especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority they are presumptuous self willed they are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the lord deep privity of false teachers was 12 but these like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed speak evil of the things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime they are spots and blemishes carousing in in their own deceptions while they feast with you having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin enticing unstable souls they have a heart trained in covetous practices and are accursed children and are accursed children they have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of balam the son of beor who loved the wages of unrighteousness but he was rebuked for his iniquity a dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet these are wells without water clouds carried away by a tempest for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever 
deceptions of false teachers. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption, for by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit and a sow having washed to her blowing in the mire. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rosalyn. Thank you so much again for uh, reading that long passage. Uh, maybe what we'll do is uh, let me quickly explain this. Otherwise, you know, you may not remember it by the time we come back and then we discuss this. So let's go through this and then we will read chapter three. So as we can see here, this is so very uh, similar to the book of Jude. Because even Jude is warning about false teachers, false prophets, their characteristics and how, uh, you know, they, they despise authority, they live ungodly lives, almost the same, same, uh, uh, you know, theme. So uh, when was this written? We have to remember, you know, like Peter, Jude, these were some of the early epistles that were written. So they were written around the same uh, time. You know, and uh, maybe like we can, we can understand that there was a real problem of a uh, false pe false teachers and heresies and wrong doctrine around them, and they needed to warn the people. And even more because they knew that there will come a time when they are going to leave. Then all the work that has been done so far, uh, you know, if it is not protected, then what will happen? It will be destroyed, isn't it? Uh, the, the labor of all these decades, the work of God, uh, pre the preservation of the, the doctrine, the teaching, uh, you know, the authenticity of our faith in God. Remember Jude said, contend for the faith. So that's the spirit with which Peter is writing this passage. I'm going to touch the highlights, you know, in various sections of chapter two. So basically he says, look, there will be false prophets, false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who brought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. So what he's saying is there will be, uh, you know, people arising in these categories, uh, even, you know, maybe even false apostles, we can say basically those who are not true ministers of God. And he says there's something uh, about the way they do this, secretly bringing in destructive heresies. Uh, and, and so we realize that sometimes the way heretical teaching comes in is not very obvious. It may be very subtle. Most of it sounds wonderful, but then there are these, um, you know, sections or uh, these, these portions that are wrong, so very wrong. But what do false teachers and prophets do? They smoothly bring it in, secretly bring in destructive heresies, it says. And it can go to a great extent, even denying the Lord. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of this happening in the world around. I once came across some very weird uh, uh, form of teaching and doctrine, um, you know, where, where someone was talking from scripture only, uh, but then it there was no Christ in it. Like there are a lot of biblical truths that they're talking about. They're talking about fasting. They're talking about faith. They're talking about moving the mountain. They're talking about the spirit of God. But uh, it's all about, you know, how we as people can, can uh, use these principles. But where is the honor to our Lord Jesus Christ? That, that was not there. Jesus and the cross, there was no emphasis on that. And it was actually quite scary because it looks, it looks so much like a church and it looks so much like, you know, um, 
Uh, I mean, I saw this on on YouTube actually. Some of the teachings of a a particular uh, uh, individual, and it was uh, so shocking that everything talking about faith and prayer and fasting sounds so biblical, but when you look at the whole path of what is actually happening, uh, there's no concept of salvation also over there. So once when that person was asked, "What do you think about salvation?" he does not. He says, "Yeah, uh, we don't need forgiveness." For anything, then what? What is the whole doctrine about? If there's no question of receiving forgiveness from the work of the cross, so you see, things like this are happening in the world around us. And why did he talk about maturity earlier? You see, the the best way to identify wrong teaching is through maturity. When we are well versed in the word, when we are strong in the Lord, we can quickly pick it up. but if there's no maturity then identifying these things becomes quite difficult so maturity is needed these kind of people will come up he says secretly bring in things even deny the lord and uh, you know he says that they are very influential many will follow their destructive ways um, and uh, uh, it's unfortunate that you know they can lead people and they will exploit people with deceptive words however in the next section you know he is just reminding us the way jude said uh, you know that there are consequences we in jude he also brought up the angels who are imprisoned punished by god for for leaving their domain uh, you know those who did not respect the authority of god and he talked about balaam right who was rebellious so he gave those examples here again we have the example of those angels in noah's time who did not um you know they they did not stay in their position they were covetous and uh, they desired something else and you know they got into sinful relationships with uh, human beings and then you know there, there he also talks about the destruction of sodom and gomora where there was so much of sin existing but the point in the section over here is consequences so he's saying there will be consequences these false teachers may think that nothing will happen but it will happen even look at the angelic host who um, engaged in sin where are they now we know that some of them are like the the ones who sin they are imprisoned but then we have other fallen angels who are who, what we call as demons and uh, they will also experience the judgment of god at the right time and one one other different note here is he mentions about lot and he says in verse 7 and delivered righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked right and then in verse 9 he goes on to say then the lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment so he's saying for unrighteousness there's going to be judgment for sure it may not look like judgment is happening or coming right and ungodly people keep propagating their teaching um but it will come uh, but for the righteous righteous lot that's an example where god is reminding us you see god knows how to deliver those who uh, somebody who is righteous and oppressed so god knows both how to judge the ungodly how to deliver the godly so we must put our trust in god and you know that's where uh, our faith must be and uh, you know he goes on and talks about these false teachers and false prophets if from verse 10 he says they walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority very similar to what jude said you know look at their life look at their rebellious nature where they don't respect authority so that those are signs those are signs actually of uh, the false teacher so then how do we identify one is we need to be mature that gives us the capacity to recognize secondly we listen to their teaching if it is not glorifying jesus we know there is error over there uh, and look at their life what kind of a life do these prophets have do these um, false teachers have those lives are more about fulfilling their own lustful desires it's not god honoring so these are all signs of uh, 
you know such such false pe- false leaders and we as the church we must be warned and we must warn others as well he says they are presumptuous self will what is the meaning of presumptuous so presumptuous is when one is not um like learned or one is not knowledgeable it's one thing to come from a place of knowledge where we read the scriptures we understand and therefore we make a statement but presumptuous is not having knowledge just saying whatever we want whatever we i mean it's not really backed up it's just you know our um, our imagination and so that's presumption and he says a lot of these teachings would come that way because people are presumptuous they just make up stories they just say whatever they feel like and he says self willed self willed also again has to do with a fleshly kind of an attitude yielding to the flesh so these are characteristics and again he says they are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries remember jude said that even uh, when when it came to the body of contending for the body of moses there was a manner in which you know the angel spoke and he said the lord rebuke you right uh, but these people have no respect for for structure order or even Uh, authority that god himself has placed on them so he's highlighting false teachers false prophets for us to understand how these people are so that we can identify now moving on to uh, a little bit more about such people so he is expanding on the fleshly kind of a lifestyle of these people uh and he says different things about what they end up doing he says um you know they firstly they will have consequences uh they are like brute beasts he says out of control uh when it comes to their their fleshly engaging in their fleshly lusts and they are made to be caught and destroyed which means they will face consequences now what are some things that they might do speak evil of the things that they do not understand so they don't have knowledge and they speak presumptuously uh, and he says he goes on carouse in the daytime what is carouse carouse has to do with you know like very uh, um loud uh, uh, drinking parties that people hold so you can imagine if somebody is partying like that in the daytime uh that's not the appropriate time they don't seem to have a sense of responsibility or focus or purpose uh, and, and so you know he he is just saying that they are all about uh, for their own benefit doing things for their own benefit uh, and he says that you know they are part of the feast uh, own deceptions while they feast with you meaning they they love to enjoy they love to enjoy uh, you know resources and uh, even fellowship so they are such people but then evil is a part of them next he goes on to say adultery their eyes are full of adultery and what else do they do they entice unstable souls so they are very deceptive trying to catch those among the fellowship or maybe you know among the the brethren who are not strong enough because that's easy for them to catch them uh, and and they have a, they they are very covetous and then he goes on to the example of balam just like jude right so balam was working for profit money right willing to go against god for the sake of money even these people they won't have that strength of character or uh, that determination to honor god if it means that they are going to get something they can easily change uh, you know the the premise that they have and so such are these people be careful about them be careful about them they have forsaken the right way and gone astray right they have they have done that and um, you know in the case of balam it was so sad can you imagine you know god had to speak through a uh, like a donkey brought the word of god so you imagine what must be the condition of a person who is not willing to listen to god to get his attention god had to make one donkey speak to say balam what are you doing you know so uh, the 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 problem here is that such individuals not only are they they uh deceiving others 
unstable people you know, they're trying to grab their attention and deceive them but they are themselves deceived so when we are self deceived you know that is one of the biggest problems ever because when we are self deceived and we are very convinced that we are correct we are right we are righteous when god is showing otherwise through his word or you know through circumstances through many other uh, uh, people around us we're not willing to listen and that's dangerous because in that situation when we are self deceived nobody can help us even god is not able to help right so these uh, false teachers and prophets not only do they deceive others but unfortunately they are themselves are self deceived and uh, it's like lucifer that was the problem of lucifer isn't it he deceived himself that he can be greater than god and that led to his destruction they're kind of moving in that same path and we can't expect anything much from them because from verse 17 he says they are wells without water so it feels like the teaching they are bringing has some value it will build us spiritually but actually there's nothing in it we will never be edified spiritually right from the false teaching or the false doctrine uh, and he uses it's like poetic language he says clouds carried by a tempest right for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever so uh, these clouds are not pleasant when there is a tempest uh, we we are not happy about those clouds but they are like that because they'll only bring destruction and they themselves will of course face the judgment of god and now the last section he continues to add about the deception of these false teachers and he says they speak great swelling words what kind of words he adds of emptiness so it's like you have the form but it's lacking power which is why we need maturity to identify that and he says they allure through the lusts of the flesh through lewdness and uh, ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error <laughs> and now he speaks just like the writer of the hebrews remember the writer of the hebrews in chapter 6 he says those who have tasted right of the things of god we were born again we were walking with the lord and now if one such person falls away it is impossible to revive that person and peter says you know if a person is so deceived and they go away from god it's like saying they should have never come to god in the first place because their their status will be worse if they come to god and then they go back uh, so in verse 21 he says for it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them so it sounds like these false teachers and false uh, uh, prophets they would be among us right the people who are believers but who have who have corrupted corrupted their teaching corrupted themselves now corrupting people uh, and uh, peter is very unhappy about this category of ministers and he says you know it's better if they had never come to know god because their end state is actually was and then he gives the example you know of a dog going back to its vomit or a so going back uh, to her wallowing in the mire which are again a, a picture of you know becoming clean and then again becoming dirty uh, and which is not useful at all so this whole section it's a warning and not just is it a warning but he is helping us understand the characteristics of deceptive ministers so that when we hear them when we observe them when we see the fruit of their work we can identify and you know get away from it so uh that is like the highlight of what is being spoken here and we can move to chapter 3 now if this yeah if there's a question we can take that up okay so there is 
question in the chat how can we bring out those that once received the word of god and was active in church programs and served if that one is become rebellious now to the parents and church and gone astray what can bring them back to god so what can bring them back to god rosalyn is of course you know like we know in uh, second peter chapter 3 we will see there's a verse that says it's like it's not god's will for anyone to perish so as long as we are alive god wants us to come back and that option is always there so we must hold on to that word and if you recall hebrews 7:25 he saves to the uttermost so the work of salvation has been completed by our lord jesus so on the basis of the finished work we can keep praying no we can keep engaging in spiritual warfare so that is something we can do and uh, james also said you know it's good it's a good thing to bring back those who have gone astray right so we must work on it by praying by extending love and and all of that um however uh you know after having done all this and maybe even counseling them and speaking to them the choice is completely theirs and hopefully their hearts will be softened and they will come back right so uh, that much we can do now uh we don't know uh, whether that person will uh you know i mean because it's it's a matter of free will right we cannot force anyone if they've gone away from god we can spiritual aspects we can engage in practical aspects of uh, you know finding out the reason why they are not active anymore all that so those practical things we can do but then ultimately it will be the will of that person to come back to god uh, does that help rosalind Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, great. So, sure. so Jeffina says, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord, does it mean angels usually tell about people to God? Is it something that happens in heaven? Okay. So, Jeffina, we wouldn't interpret it like that because we don't have uh, other scripture like. corroborating that truth so then how do we understand it see it's just for us to understand that angels though they are mighty because they carry glory the kind of glory they carry as heavenly beings we don't have that here on earth even though they carry glory and authority they don't misuse it they don't bring a reviling accusation so that's what it means yeah they honor their position of authority and they honor the authority structure unnecessarily they will not uh, you know get out of line that's the understanding yeah great okay so now let's continue uh, second peter chapter 3 if someone can read through it will highlight the key key aspects second peter chapter 3 beloved i now write to you the second epistle in in both of which i stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us the apostles of the lord and savior knowing this first that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lust and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation for this they willfully forget that by the word of god the heavens were made were were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water but the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men 
But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The day of the Lord, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works of, that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought, to, ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent teeth. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, Beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot and blameless, and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your, from, from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Roslyn. Thank you once again. Uh, and as we saw here, we uh, he continues talking about you know these people, and he says that look, I am reminding you, right? I am reminding you, and uh, just be mindful of the words that were spoken to you by people of God, you know, uh, about all these matters, things that are coming up. And things that will come up uh, in in uh, you know the the years ahead, and uh, he is continuing regarding these uh, false prophets and false teachers. He uses the word scoffers, you know, scoffers who who kind of uh, mock uh, something that others say, uh, and and so they are scoffers who mock the very word of God. Meaning that implies that they don't have faith in the authority of god's word or the power of god's word so they may ask questions like you know uh, when is jesus coming back uh, from the beginning they are saying he'll come back but he where is he now so they are mocking they are mocking the word of god that has been spoken and you know that that is not a good thing so along with all the other characteristics that we added now we are understanding that they are not believing in the word of god but Peter is reminding us, look, this whole, everything, the universe was created by the word and everything is being sustained by the word. In verse 7, he says, the heavens and earth, which are now preserved by the same word, the way Hebrews 1, 3 says, you know, that uh, uh, God, by, by the word, he is sustaining the universe. And the word of God is so powerful. Now, how can... How can people mock the power of God's word? Uh, but these people, it's as if they're setting themselves up for the day of judgment. And, uh, you know, they, they are continuing in, in wickedness. And that is so dangerous. But he tells the believers, he tells the believers, look, it's not like God cannot uh, rain down justice on them right now. It's not like that. Because... See, for God, a long time is actually not a long time. So he's giving God's calculation regarding timelines. In verse 8, he says, Beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. It's just to say that even a long time is like a jiffy for the Lord. It's quick for God. And um, uh, it's not like, you know, God is dragging or, you know, God is uh, not aware of 
such people and for some reason you know their judgment is not coming it's not like that but god is faithful to the the laws that he has said god is faithful to his word he's not slack concerning his promise but on the other hand we understand that he's very long suffering now he has to let things take its time uh, and we know when we study eschatology there is a certain manner in which we are going to see god work first we'll have the secret coming of the lord you know then we'll have the great tribulation then we'll have uh, the second coming of the lord uh, you know following that we have the uh, thousand year millennial rule of christ right then we'll have the judgment so there's the, the way in which things have been structured god is going to take it through in that order it's not because he's slack but right now what is god focusing in on he's focusing in on people being saved it says in verse 9 uh, you know that but is long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance so how many does god want to come to repentance all should come to repentance so he is being patient in that sense you know giving us time people use the word we are living in a period of grace yeah that's true god is just waiting for people to change for lives to turn around but then finally you know once things begin to take place he's talking about the period when god is going to dissolve all things we know that the bible talks about the new heavens the new earth uh, if we go back to uh, the book of hebrews when we learn we said god will roll up the heavens as a cloak he's able to do that you know it's like you just roll up some uh, curtain for god it's like that he's just going to roll it up he's going to dissolve things are going to melt melt away and then you know the newness of god the new heavens the new earth there is a reference over here uh, that will be formed in which righteousness dwells you know at that point all this wickedness that we see you know up until then god is going to uh, uh, you know completely destroy it and also we know about the judgment of satan and his demons how they will be uh, thrown into the bottomless pit so judgment would have been completed at that point and you know god uh, the dwelling of god's people in new heavens and the new earth all of that will take place uh, and so in view of how powerful the word of god is and how true he is to his word he's just reminding the believer when evil things happen when we see false preachers and teachers and all somewhere we get disturbed we think god why are you not doing anything but he's just reminding the believer don't worry god is true to his word whatever he said it will happen so well, how should we be how should we be in in the midst of that he tells the believer you look forward to these things that god is going to do uh, and uh, you know you be you be without spot and blameless and you know you be strong in the lord and that's what he's he's calling the believer to do and he makes a reference to brother paul over here thankfully by now you know they've understood that even he is an apostle and he is a honored apostle among the other apostles you know people like peter who walked with jesus and he is actually applauding and commending uh, the learnedness of paul where you know look at peter being one of those mighty apostles he is so humble he is saying uh, uh, you know consider that the long suffering of our lord is salvation as also our beloved brother paul according to the wisdom given to him has written to you and he says verse 16 as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these one second ha huh, think these things in which are some things hard to understand so that is peter's uh, acknowledgement he's saying paul is so knowledgeable that even peter is saying you know some things are so difficult for us to understand the way paul puts it because he received revelation from god uh, and uh, you know that really shows the kind of relationship that apostles had among themselves honoring one another honoring the grace of god upon other ministers of god so he's saying you know paul so brilliant the revelation that he received that some things are even hard to understand but what is the what 
becomes a challenge with those hard to understand matters is again he refers back to these uh, you know ungodly ministers and he says look they twist these uh, mysterious matters because people are looking for answers regarding these matters so what do these men do or you know women do they twist it to their own benefit and he says their own destruction right as they twist the rest of scripture and he adds to their description and he says they are untaught unstable untaught unstable meaning they don't have a uh, proper knowledge of the scriptures or they've not worked towards it to gain proper knowledge of the scriptures and he also says unstable meaning there are issues of character there are issues of uh, um, you know when it comes to sincerity of worshiping the lord so those are the uh, characteristics of those people and they twist scripture especially the mysterious things that paul talks about because many of the things that he has written are so amazing and then again he goes on to remind the believer to just be steadfast so i'm going to read through verses 17 and 18 with which we finish so he says you therefore beloved since you know this beforehand beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness being led away with the error of the wicked but grow in the grace and knowledge of our lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. So, he, two things. One is, we are steadfast. Don't lose that. Second is, keep growing. Right? And uh, ultimately, all honor, all glory is of our Lord. So, that is the final exhortation in the chapter three of second peter so if there's anything that we want to discuss we can bring that up Okay, but I would encourage us to uh, again go back and uh, in personal study to also refer you know, to uh, tools like ESOD and uh, um, look up commentaries. What we've recommended is David Guzik's Enduring Word uh, because with the paucity of time, we have managed to complete the portions that we have been given, but I'm sure we can dwell on this for you know double the time triple the time and still get so much more out of it so i encourage us to please do that we've only managed to cover uh, keeping in line with the scope of you know what we have uh, in this course but yeah uh, uh, this is not the end even though this is the end uh, you know please do take time to keep studying these books over and over again and uh, surely it'll, it'll keep speaking to us right so with that we will close and uh, thank you everyone it's really wonderful journeying with all of all of you uh, and i know this is the graduating batch so three years right three years uh, and yeah god bless you all and really looking forward to uh, keeping in touch and seeing what the lord does in each of your lives so let's close off with the word of prayer, I'll just pray and uh, speak a blessing. Abba Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, truly it is your grace, Lord, um, by which, Lord, we've come thus far. And Lord, it is you, Lord, who's enabled each one of us to, to journey in um, the courses. And Lord, uh, uh, thank you, Lord, for each and every student in this class. Father, we pray may your spirit 
bring the word alive in their hearts in their lives oh god and thank you for each one lord as a minister of of the the gospel thank you that lord you you will stir up the grace and the gifts of god uh, upon their lives and god that every single one of them lord will be a mover and a shaker a father filled with the holy spirit lord uh, extending the kingdom of god and father bringing uh, glory and honor to your name lord we pray that you will continue to empower them continue to strengthen them lord continue to comfort them lord uh, so that lord they they will um, uh, not not be weary uh, but press forward lord passionately father to to live for the for the honor and glory of your name father i speak blessings uh, upon every single student father god in this course we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in jesus name we pray amen amen um so thank you class uh, i'm just going to end this class